In this edition of Ringside, we've been talking about the prospects of some of the emerging middleweight talent in this country, two of the brightest of them, Glenn Catley and Robin Reed, joining Barry McGuigan here with me. Most of the men who've featured so far are still in their early 20s, but a man who does not have time on his side is Michael Carruth, a star amateur, a long career in the unpaid ranks, culminating in an Olympic gold medal at welterweight in Barcelona. An unforgettable performance, but at 28, the Irishman knows he's going to progress quickly in the pro ranks if he's going to succeed. Carruth's one defeat as a professional came against the Scotsman Gordon Blair, but the big question is whether he can maneuver a title shot and soon. Here he is in action against Steve McGovern in Cardiff in June. Third round, Michael Carruth in the green and white stripes. And uh, if you're still uncertain, he's got his name emblazoned on the uh, waistband of his shorts, hopefully. Steve McGovern is finding what so many amateurs found with Carruth, that he's, he's quite awkward and difficult to work out out of that southpaw style. Yes, for an orthodox fighter, it's, it's very hard to, to fight the southpaw because you're, you're used to fighting orthodox people all the time. So it, it, it's often difficult. We're a southpaw on the whole. They're used to fighting orthodox guys all the time. So they're used to, to that stance. But apart from being a southpaw, he's a very good southpaw. And McGovern's trying to exert some pressure here. Found it hard to catch Caruth at all, really, in truth, so far. Now, that's classy. Yes, that was a nice, fast combination. Some hurtful punches went in there as well. Very sharp. The body shots look particularly hurtful from Caruth. McGovern is trying to be busy and trying to outwork Caruth, but he's running on to shots. One thing I like about him is he's hard to hit as well, isn't he, cleanly, Caruth? Didn't take many. Yes, he has a good defence and he keeps moving all the time. He's already had uh, American experience. He boxed in Worcester, Massachusetts, winning in three rounds there. That was where Tony Simpson fought Marvin Hagler, I seem to remember, in a, a blizzard. About four feet deep the time we came out of the arena. That's another story. Well, he's on his bike a bit here, Carruth. Just trying to invite McGovern in. He seems to be... Uh, the type who likes to counter punch too. Yes, he likes to he likes to go backwards and he likes the other guy to lead and him to, to catch him on the counter. But he does it very well and that, that sort of style suits suits him. It's just worth making the point that Caruth, although he's only had eight professional contests, he's a very, very experienced boxer. A lot of miles on the clock as an amateur. Well, it's all going to plan for Michael Carruth so far. 27 years of age from Dublin. They have big hopes, and uh, what a fantastic achievement it was for him to win that Olympic gold. Remember, Britain has not had an Olympic champion since 1968, when Chris Finnegan won. That's uh, too long, isn't it? It is far too long. And I'm sure he was very pleased with his some good work at the end of the round there from Carruth. There you see nice fast combination punching. His win of McGovern coming in and then he's counting very well. There were hurtful punches. But McGovern, he's strong, got a good chin. Steve McGovern, he has had some useful wins. Uh, Rocky Milton among his victims. He's managed by Jack Bishop. Fourth round. Ireland against the Isle of Wight. 
Ruth, remember, with the striped shorts, in case you still need the identification. He's only been taken the distance three times so far in his eight contests. One of those was in his defeat by uh, Blair. He was pretty disgusted about losing that one. As well, I think that could maybe have been a blessing for him, Ian, uh, early in his professional career. You know, maybe he's, he was living on the glory of the Olympic gold a little bit and maybe thought it would be quite easy in the professional. So maybe, you know, maybe a loss early on will just bring his feet down and uh, onto the ground and make him realize that it's going to take a lot of hard work to get to the top in the professionals yes it can uh, concentrate the mind wonderfully it's just too fast isn't he for mcgovern among other things here as well Yes, McGovern's trying hard, but just been beaten to the punch. Ruth's long time aim, of course, must be to get up there among the leading welterweights. We have, like Gary Jacobs, Damon Locker, and Del Bryan. Cruz working well off the right hand. He was the jab was good before. Now he's turned into hooks and he's doubling and tripling. Good combination as well, Ian. Yes, all the signs are that he's got too much for McGovern here. McGovern, I think one of those stung him. He just wanted to hold on for a moment. And this may be, I don't know, his legs seem to betray him, and he's bloodied now around the nose. I was going to say, Carruth's been landing with so much that it would be surprising if McGovern wasn't starting to show the signs of wear and tear, durable kind of fighter that he is. Yes, it looked like that a quick two-punch combination of, of hooks hurt him a little bit there. He just seemed to be grasping to, to get his feet firmly on the floor. He looked a little bit hurt. He's starting to get caught with increasing regularity. The referee stopped it. The referee stopped it. And that's a good stoppage, I think, by Winford Jones, because it was getting extremely one-sided. Carruth was doing exactly as he pleased. And, well, there have been people who've expressed reservations about this fellow, but for me, there tonight, he did absolutely nothing wrong, and I think he's going to be a threat to the top welterweights around, given a little bit more professional experience. I'm sure he can. In the fourth round, they really bust into, into action. There were some very good very fast combinations and he kept the pressure on so well a lot of punches there to finish that McGovern who's normally a tough guy he just couldn't stand it at the end a little bit of the work here right right at the end he's doubling up on them them hooks hurtful punches and we just see he loses his foot in a little bit there McGovern trying to grab for dear life so Michael Carruth gets a stoppage win on his record and he really did turn on some pretty impressive boxing skills there not by the look of it a concussive puncher but with the skills I would think to pose a threat to most people around yes, and this is right at the finish but you see how many punches are coming in there Ian the referee he did well he, he it was the right time to stop the fight there all right uh, glittering amateur career mm. uh, by his own admission Michael Carruth has found it difficult to adjust as a professional mm. but as we've said already the time is not on his side at the age of yep. 28 mm. can he first engineer a title shot for himself well he can't fight for a British title um, sure uh, he's an Irishman and uh, I think that uh, he's a southern Irishman I think he's a very uh, he's a very talented kid um, I think there are three major things against him uh, apart from the fact that he's a great counter puncher very fast hands, uh, puts himself in a position to hit you with very, very quick combinations and can rattle them off like in a split second. But he does lack power. He lacks uh, the ability to punch through the target. He punches at it and stops at it and brings his hands back. And that's the amateur game uh, and it's the amateur training and old habits die hard. He hits the target and, and gets his hands back, recovers rather than goes right through it. 
And uh, that shows in the, in the amount of stoppages that he had. And, uh, you know, there's no doubt about it. He's got great talent, very fast hands, southpaw, and, and, and you know, always difficult to fight southpaws. And you can see how impressive he is here against John Smith and Cork on, on the Eubank Collins second fight. He's, uh, you know, he's picking his shots well here, looking for the spot. And, uh, you know, he gets the punches off really quickly and very impressively. He's burst them off like, like a shot. And Smith is a veteran of over 100 fights and has been stopped by guys that are even much lighter than, than Cruz. But you can see the, the lack of power there. Throws, you know, masterful combinations, but just doesn't have the power. And another very important uh, issue is that he cuts easily, right. which is against him. 28 years old, he's got a lot of things to, uh, you know, to uh, a lot of uh, mountains to, to climb okay. before he gets to adopt the top. The but adopt the optimistic approach. Oh, yes, indeed. Adopt <laughs> Sorry, Michael, if, if it appears that I'm being... No, you're being entirely skeptic. realistic. But if things uh, weren't fall into place for Michael, Cook, without how doubt, can he progress? I think right now, if you fought Chris Saunders, he could give uh, Saunders an, a, a life and death struggle. He will respond to a step up in class, and I think that he can become a champion, and that he, he needs to fight guys of better ability and get over the trial horse uh, area, because that actually can turn, as the guys know, to be more difficult than, than the actual guys that are higher up the ra rankings. Thank you, Barry. Now